The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, glad, you're, glad you're here. Uh, I'm going to go down the announcements because that keeps you, keeps you on track. Uh, we still do have church calendars. Uh, there's more in the office. If anybody is looking for a uh, calendar for the year, you're welcome to it. It's a tradition that we have. Uh, Christmas poinsettias are coming up, uh, and oh, yeah. uh, Lucy's right here uh, to speak to, uh, and uh, $15 to uh, leave a uh, plant in memory of a loved one will, will, will go up in the church uh, and then they can be taken later but we'll talk about that later uh, further in the weeks. Uh, shockingly, a week from today, uh, the Newport Navy Choristers uh, concert will be here. Uh, um, there is a full poster in your, uh, in your bulletin so you can see all the details. It is four o'clock. We would love to have you. We love filling up this sanctuary. Uh, we never know. We trust it to God to bring bring people and to um, uh, and it, it just seems to work. Well, and God often works in and through human beings, so bring people. Yes, yes, please do, <laughs> please do. Uh, I, I say it to each person, but I'll say it out loud. You get the chance to see me make a fool of myself with, with all gusto and joy, uh, and they give me the opportunity, so I take it. Um, the week following is a group uh, will be going, uh, caroling around Fall River, so uh, people contact people for that are Sherry and Pastor Jamie. I'll point you to Sherry. Yeah, right. It's not, uh, <laughs> a little bit more, but anyway, so that's it. That, that would be the week following, and then the week following, so we have one for each. Uh, comes your weekend with the uh, uh, Christmas concert, and uh, if she doesn't say it, I will. Always good to get those tickets in advance. That's three dollars. That you know, you don't need to, you don't need to spend. So, and I do have tickets, so remind so if you yep. want to come here to the South Coast Community Corral either Saturday the 16th mm -hmm. uh, or Sunday the 17th, uh, you can get tickets from me in advance. Um, it's, it's such a good group that I have this privilege of singing with, and it's such a joy to sing with them. And the Christmas concert, not only do you get to hear this excellent group sing, but, um, you know, there's a piece where they just do Christmas carols and we sort of layer a dust can on top. And so you get to come and sing Christmas carols too. So I think it's just a wonderful experience. So please consider coming. Amen. And uh, last but not least, because this will actually come up starting next, uh, next Sunday, uh, this is the Advent Candle uh, Lighting Sign Up. Uh, each week takes, uh, it takes two people. So we have one person filled in, but it's a two person experience each yes. week. Uh, and um, multiple opportunities. Uh, Christmas Eve this year is on Sunday, so you get to come to church twice on uh, Sunday. Uh, but uh, it is another Advent um, uh, lighting on that, on that. So there's plenty of opportunities. We'd love to have you sign up rather than us chasing uh, chasing you around. Well, that's it. If you sign um, up, then, then you avoid me having to like chase you down and say, will you please do the thing? Mm -hmm. So you're, yep. you're going to do it one way or another. You know you are. Just sign this sheet. <laughs> pick, pick, pick a partner, uh, whatever, or just sign up your name and then we'll figure out who uh, comes along. So if, if don't don't worry. Don't let, if you're a single, don't let that. Yes, yeah, so you don't, do not have to sign don't, your sex. Don't, don't let that worry you. You're not the one that has to go find uh, all of that. And we'll have this on the back table and actually probably our, yeah, let's get that to coffee hour because it's fresh and we need uh, something for next we need another person for next Sunday so Excellent. any other announcements Jeff yes if anyone would like to bake for next Sunday uh, I'm doing coffee hour and the <laughs> uh, uh, Luce is saying if you would uh, have any interest or would uh, to bake um, uh, she will be handling both coffee hour, yeah, uh, coffee, it's not done. Anyway, coffee hour and uh, then later, what we do with the choristers is that there's a collation, fancy word, but 
anyway, there's a, there's a spread uh, downstairs for their intermission, for their after, uh, and it would be a wonderful time for them to see something that you make that you're, is one of your favorites. Maybe you did it at Thanksgiving, you can do it one more time, but when you put it down there, I am telling you the appreciation that they show and the raving that they give is, is, well, is well worth it. Um, it's not open to everyone, but your, your, your contribution would be uh, most appreciated. And all of the proceeds that come from that concert go to our community meals. Right. Um, so this is, a, this is a concert, it's a joyous celebration, but it is also a benefit for our community meals. Um, we're feeding, we haven't crunched the numbers recently. I've been saying for a while, we feed 10,000 people a year. I think we're up from that. Yep. This little teeny congregation feeds more than 10,000 meals a year. Amen, church? Amen. 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 Awesome. Thank you so much. So let us now join in the responsive call to worship that's printed in your bulletin. I will read the parts in the Roman type and ask that you respond with the parts in italics. And if when you have it, you would signify, if able, by standing. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Oh, that today we would listen to God's voice. But the Lord is our God, and that we are the people of God's pasture. Our opening hymn is Come Ye Thankful People Come on page two. <coughs> slow down and be thankful with our families and friends. We remember you who is always in our lives, showing us the way, helping us help others, and feeling the warmth of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit as we see the world. We are so thankful for everything that you have given us, and we are thankful for all of our friendships and families, and we thank you for being our guiding light in our lives. Yes, this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our hymn of preparation is We Gather Together on page five. 
I gave you all the Thanksgiving things. our praise and our gratitude and to lift our concerns to God uh, that uh, we might ask for God's intercession. So uh, Jeff will come around with a microphone and ask that you share your joys and your concerns. Amen. Uh, and in a uh, rare but uh, not ep uh, totally unusual, uh, I did not go see Naomi this Friday. I knew that uh, uh, there were people that were visiting both on Thanksgiving Day and visiting on Friday and she was uh, covered to know that she was loved, and so I uh, took that breather and uh, went, went a different direction, made it fall, um, <laughs> and avoided all the crazy traffic. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I, I'm going to do a concern and then one more joy. The concern is that I uh, still have a friend who's uh, working through their recovery. Uh, we're trading just a few texts to you know, take touch base, but they're uh, two weeks in and saying they just feel so much better. They, they uh, took themselves and recognized it was a moment they needed to get some help. So super proud of them and uh, super joyous that uh, it, it's, the, the reports are good. Um, so that's just a concern, a joy and a concern, I guess. Uh, the last joy is that anybody that uh, I know, actually I know who went, uh, Janice and Linda and I were at the uh, interfaith service, uh, and the joy is that, you know, pastors are solemn and they're preaching the, the gospel, and but once you put them wait, all together, wait, to be wait, wait, wait I, once, you, <laughs> once you put them all together, Lord, anyway, uh, <laughs> it was, it was fun, it was good, it was, at, at any time you gather a number of churches, a number of pastors, and just, uh, you know, it, there's so many different traditions that, you know, we ask an Episcopalian to, to go through a Baptist service and they're like, wait a minute, where's my, where's my, where's the kneeling, where's the, you know, they, they were, uh, they, there was communion, so that's, Lord Almighty, there's enough traditions. To, right, the little cups that go around is not an Episcopalian thing, they were no, like, what do we do with these, this is fun, <laughs> so yeah. So, it was a good service, so it's just an encouragement, it would be now be a year away, but uh, it, it is a good time, and I got to uh, introduce myself to a couple of pastors uh, that are over in the S, I call them the S-Towns, uh, but their churches in different ways are supporting the Branch Supper, and I want to uh, take the time uh, to reach out to them and uh, thank them for uh, what, their, what their churches are doing. All right, joys and concerns for this week. Let me come over to Sherry. To keep my daughter Caitlin in prayer, she will be having surgery on Thursday. And an odd moment because maybe it could have been announcements, but you're still collecting for warm hearts, so yep. uh, we'll be. If you have things to uh, to bring in, please do, and we'll have a place for other jo other joys and concerns. I see a number of your people that that did the retreat, so hopefully they're still feeling the your your 
retreat is still... People seem to glow and smile at me when they talk about it, so... Good. Good. <laughs> other, joy, other joys and concerns we can start uh, bringing up with those that we love but are missing. Um, so we uh, uh, bring up Esther, we bring up uh, Bob and Ann, uh, where else do we go? Jane. Jane, Jane, Sally, you know the name. You have the names. You're checking to see if I <laughs> missed any. I'll leave, I'll leave it to, <laughs> no, I'm checking I'll to see if I missed any. Anyway. Uh, but I so, tend to do this this right. categorical thing anyway, so right. don't worry about it. Sue Hall. Right. Sue Hall, Sue for sure. I love mentioning Sue. I know she watches the service, so we certainly want uh, her to hear her name and know that she's always remembered and we miss her dearly. So, and wish her the best of her um, health and recovery. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Let us pray for the world and for this community and for this church. Lord, we are so grateful for the many blessings that you shower upon us. We are grateful for uh, the chance to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ at a joint service. Uh, we are grateful uh, for their participation in our feeding ministry and our clothing ministry and our homeless ministries. Um, we are grateful for the opportunity to work together uh, to witness to your gospel here in Fall River. Um, we're grateful for all who support uh, our missions and we're grateful that we get to be a part of your plans and your purposes for this community, Lord. Uh, we do not underestimate what a blessing you have given us, um, this participation. We pray for all who seek your radiant light in the darkened corners of this world. May we find our way to you, Father, through our love for one another. We pray for all who are oppressed by institutions and structures that are unjust. Bless us with a joy for justice that all might share in the blessings of this life, that we might walk in right relationship with you by caring for our neighbor. We pray for all who have no work. We pray for those without adequate health care. We pray for all who hunger or have no shelter. Bless us and bless them with meaningful work and ample provision as we love and care for each other under your protection. Father, we lift up to you all who suffer violence on dangerous streets and in war-torn places. We lift up to you uh, still uh, those in the Ukraine who are uh, suffering from the Russian invasion, and we pray for those in Israel and, and Palestine um, that they might find a way to uh, live together in peace. Keep them from harm's way. Bless us with your vision of peace so that all might flourish as one family under God with justice and freedom for all. We remember before you all who have died that they might know your peace. Bless each of us with a sure and certain hope of resurrection, that we might know our risen Lord and share eternal life with you. Lord, we pray uh, for those who are uh, not with us today in body, but who are with us in spirit. We pray for those who uh, worship with us virtually. Uh, we pray for all of your community that we might uh, know that know your love here, that we might feel your uh, presence uh, here uh, with us. We pray for Esther that she might have continued health and for Jane that she might have health. We pray for Sue Holland. We pray for Caitlin uh, that her surgery might um, be successful this week, that her doctors and nurses and all of the staff might be skillful and kind. Uh, we pray for John, that he might continue to have health. We pray for Naomi and Leon, that they might have many, many more good days and not very many bad ones. Lord, we pray for all who are working through recovery. We lift up our gratitude and praise to you for those who are well on the path to health. And for those who still need help, we pray uh, that that help be available to them and that we uh, might um, be part of your plans and your purposes, your solutions, um, to show your love and your light in this world. 
Lord, we lift up all of these people, and lastly, we lift up ourselves, and we ask that you bless us, use us as your hands and voices, use us uh, to be your light uh, wherever there is darkness. We ask all of this in the most precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We've spent a weekend being thankful, I hope. Did everyone feel some gratitude this weekend? Yeah? Um, uh, so we give from the abundance that we've been given. Um, we give from the gratitude that we have for being fed. Uh, we give not just fed physically, but fed spiritually. Uh, we give of our resources, but we give of our time and talents as well. Um, so let us now collect our morning tithes and offerings. Walk in love. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a willing sacrifice and offering to God. As water to the thirsty on page eight.
morning comes from Mark chapter 6, and Andrea has it this morning. Excellent. Thank you, Andrea. Our reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 32 through 46. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Thank you, Henry. So fairly recently, I listened to a sermon about God's abundance and our need for gratitude. But honestly, I had been really sick and I'd been handling some tough things and the words that the preacher was saying about abundance and gratitude were so far from where I was at the moment. I was such a, at such a distance from what the preacher was saying that honestly it made me feel worse. Have you ever been there in that kind of spot? We're heading into the Christmas season in our secular society. In church, it's going to be the Advent season. Uh, now, I am here for real Christmas. I love Christian Christmas when the world is darkness and God, and um, when the nations are ruled by despots and when life is scary or poor or harsh, that God enters the world at light in the darkness, light that the darkness does not overcome. God enters the world in that hard place, right in the midst of us, light in our darkness. That I can preach until the end of my time, until God calls me home. But while I have good friends, I've been celebrating Thanksgiving with the people who came on Thursday. My, uh, I say, call her my best friend. Uh, I've been celebrating Christmas with her since her grandmother was alive and we would go to Baltimore when I was in graduate school the first time to eat with her family. I, I remember eating with her grandmother and her great aunts and her cousins uh, and now she is coming with her husband and her now 18 year old son I don't know how that happened uh, to my house for Thanksgiving her brother didn't manage to come from Michigan this year but he called us and so was sort of part of that uh, celebration um, I have I have good friends church I'm, I'm not a sad person I'm a happy person in my life but this season is hard for me because I don't have any family to speak of. My father died when I was a baby. My mother died in March 2020. I have no brothers and sisters. I don't have nieces and nephews. And unlike 
the real Christmas season in church, the Christian version in which God is coming to us when we are far from our families, when we are in exile, the real Christmas story is about how God comes to us when we are not at home. Society wants to make Christmas about people who are surrounded by all of their loved ones. Well, that's lovely. It was lovely when I was a child. I was surrounded by all of my loved ones, but is there anyone in this room who will not be noticing a loss this Christmas? Anyone? Every single person in this room is going to be feeling the weight of someone who used to be there, who is not there. Notice how many hands went up. Zero. You are not alone if you find that there is grief and loss in the midst of this Christmas season. And yet our society does not want us to talk about it. I'm talking about it not to make you feel bad. I'm talking about it so that you know if you are at a distance from what society tells you Christmas is supposed to feel like, Guess what? You're in a whole room full of people who at some point in time feel at a distance from what society tells us Christmas is supposed to feel like. Yes? For many of us, the Christmas season is very hard. But we read the scripture today, I picked it because it's a scripture about abundance and feasting. And of course, we've just come off of Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, season is a season also in which we talk about abundance and feasting. But this is not about those things in a sort of bobble-headed, we live in the best, best of all possible worlds kind of way. This story is about gratitude and abundance in the midst of real and enormous grief. You see, this story takes place right after Herod Antipas, the ruler of Galilee, had made an unwise public promise to his new wife's daughter, Salome. And as a result, he had killed John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. He had had him beheaded and that head served up at a platter, uh, on a platter at some terrible feast. Not even because he hated him. He didn't hate him. He admired him, but purely for the optics of it, to save face. Jesus' cousin had just been murdered in cold blood and his head severed and paraded at this feast because Herod didn't want to be made to look bad for going back on a reckless promise. That's why John the Baptist died. Can you imagine the grief and the anger that you would feel if one of your cousins was dead for absolutely, not even a political reason, just because someone didn't wanna lose face in public? And so Jesus and the disciples hearing of this, the mental image of that head on a platter just looping, I'm certain, in their minds over and over. The gut punch of the loss of John the Baptist still churning in their bodies. Jesus and the disciples were trying just to get some time to themselves, some quiet time to grieve, to process it all, to find their breath again so that they could go back out into the world. But the people were also grieving how many of the people of Galilee do you think had been baptized by John in the muddy water of the River Jordan? How many of them had heard him preach to them, had gone out to hear him, had seen him as their leader? And the people were also reeling from the loss. They were torn by grief. And so while Jesus and the disciples are on a boat in the lake in the, lake in, uh, the Sea of Galilee, um, the people are racing around the shoreline to get to where that boat's going to dock. So that when, when they're trying to get away, what happens is they get to the shoreline and they find a whole crowd of people waiting for them, clamoring on that shore. Have you ever just wanted some time alone? 
and had people follow you asking for your attention. That's how Jesus must have felt. My heavens, I just, I just, I just want five minutes by myself and I can't get it. All of these people descend on Jesus, the noise, the clamor, the disruption, the need of it, the opposite of what Jesus had been seeking. And I noticed that Jesus behaved differently than I probably would in that circumstance. What do you do when you want time alone and people are clamoring at you and following you? Have you ever s snap at them? Get away from me, leave me alone, I just want some time. Oops, luckily it wasn't the Bible. <laughs> Jesus did not do that. Jesus instead takes compassion with them, on them. He, uh, the Greek says uh, his gut churned for them. That's the word in Greek. It's a very, very long word in Greek that says his gut churned for them when he saw this need. John the Baptist had been mur murdered by Herod, and these poor people are like sheep without a shepherd, reeling from the news. And so Jesus teaches them. He has them sit down. Did you notice where they sit? On the green grass. Jesus has them sit down on the green grass as a shepherd to his sheep. Think about where sheep uh, are. Uh, and he has his disciples feed them there beside the lake on the green grass. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we see this come to pass by the lake on this green grass as Jesus teaches them and has his disciples feed them. This gospel is about God's provision and God's abundance. Feeding, did you notice it was 5,000 men, maybe 8,000 people? 10,000 people, men, women, and children? By collecting what they have and multiplying it as God always does, takes what little we can give and multiplies it and gives us back to us. Pressed down, shaken, running over, right? Abundance. But this isn't a scene in which everything is right with the world. It's not about being surrounded by everyone you ever loved. It's not about um, the external world somehow changing to match your ideal. Rather, it is about God's love that reaches us even when we are feeling lost about God's love that reaches us maybe most when we are feeling lost and aimless and shepherdless, about God who is our shepherd, who will guide us where we need to go. Uh, where? In the valley of sunshine and life? In the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, when we are surrounded by enemies, that is where God comes to us is present with us and feeds us in body and in soul. Amen? Now, Psalm 23 talks about enemies, and I don't know about you, I don't tend to think of myself as having enemies. But man, I do struggle with enemies sometimes, do you? I don't know how the enemy attacks you. I know how the enemy attacks me. Uh, uh, man, I tell myself stories that aren't true. I tell myself stories that aren't helpful. Uh, I tell myself stories that don't end in hope, but that end, end in design, end in some sort of disaster. 
I fill myself with anxiety. Do those things come from God? Am I just creating those things by myself all the time? Maybe I have a part in it. But where do those things come from? Those things come from the enemy, right? Do you get attacked? Am I the only one? Anyone here doesn't know what I'm talking about? Again, no hands, right? One, good, excellent, one happy person. Never attacked, I love it. <laughs> excellent, keep the joy, I love it, yes? If you have joy and laughter, I have joy and laughter most of my life. Do not hear me say I am an unhappy person. I am so grateful that I get to walk this path with this church. I am so grateful that this church gets to participate in God's plans and purposes. God feeds me body and spirit every day. But it is not because I have lived a life that consisted only of sunshine and unicorns and rainbows. <clears throat> It is because God has brought me through the deepest, darkest valleys that I did not think I was going to get through. But God was present with me and brought me through anyway. We do serve a God of abundance, church, and we have so much to be grateful for. But none of it is a bobble-headed, everything's okay, and the best of all possible worlds sort of gratitude. We serve a real God who sees us in the real world and comes to us in the midst of it and loves us and provides for us and will lead us through. And that church is the good news. Amen? Mm -hmm. Our closing hymn is Now Think We All Are God on page 10.